So today I thought we'd do um, knots in 3D uh, in ZBrush. There's an amazing website here called animatednots.com. Um, if you go to that, you'll see they have every kind of knot you can possibly imagine and then lots more besides. They organize them into different activities. They organize them by type. They've got technical information, all kinds of stuff on it. It's absolutely an amazing resource. The best thing about it is that when you click on one, and I'm just going to choose the clove hitch rope end here, for example, each one of these comes with an example um, where it actually shows you how to tie the knot frame by frame. So it kind of goes over, all loops over itself, turns around, comes out underneath, pull it tight, job done. So this is great reference for when you actually want to make your own version of these knots. I've actually created four of these knots for you, which I'll, I'll post um, afterwards if you want. You can download them and use them in your own projects. But the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to make them yourself. So I'm going to start off with this one here. We start off with a uh, just a, a cylinder, and, and then all we have to do really is append a Z-sphere. So once I go to that Z-sphere, I select that Z-sphere, I can press W to go into uh, move mode, push this down, and I'm going to scale it down as well. So I'm going to press E to scale that down, I'm going to drag up, and that will make that nice and small. I'll press Q to go back into draw mode, and we'll click and drag onto our cylinder, onto our Z-sphere rather. Press W to move it, so that will allow this to move. Um, Q will go back and draw another one on top of that. But if we don't want to do that, um, we can take advantage of all these little intermediate ones in between. So with draw mode turned on by pressing Q, I can click on any one of these and it will convert that into a Z-sphere in its own right. So if I press W to go back to transform, we can move that or move this. So now we can actually draw them out. So I can pull this over here. I can press Q to say, well, I want one over here. Press W to move this one. Press Q to say, I want one there. Press W to move this over. Press Q to say, oh, Q to say, I want one there. W down. And keep on going, basically, until we're happy that we have all of the spheres that we want. These can move in 3D space, obviously. So we want to follow the directions of the actual knot. Um, I'd like to pull one out, leaving knowing that I'm going to convert one of these gray ones here by pressing Q, I'll pull this out. I know I want one over here, so I'll press Q. Pull that out with W, press Q again, press W, press Q, press W, and basically build up our knot like that. So when you have to put one knot underneath another, or one piece of the string underneath, just press W, pull one out, do that. And you're basically just building this shape up. The smaller you make your draw size, the better. The easier it is to just select one at a time because you can, if you have a large brush side, you can affect too many at a time. If you just want to affect one, just make it nice and small. And this way we can actually make these the way we like. So this is one thing having a Z-sphere chain, but we need to convert this into something at the end. So I've already done, here's one I prepared earlier kind of thing. This is the clove hitch where I've just basically done exactly what we've done there, but continued. If you go down to the bottom here under adaptive skin, this is where ZBrush will actually convert this into a piece of geometry for you. So by default, the settings are like this. And if I hit A on my keyboard, um, it's the exact, the exact same as hitting preview here. So I'll press Q to get out of this so we can see. And you can see that this is actually Dynamesh, and that's not what we want. And the reason it's Dynamesh is because the Dynamesh resolution was set to 128. If we bring that down to zero, and we turn off preview and turn it back on again, you'll see that it won't actually dynamesh this now. I'll press Shift F to see um, the geometry. And there's a little bit too much information here. So that's the density setting. So this is basically the higher we have this, the more polygons it'll create. So I want to bring this right down to the minimum like that. So that's created a piece of geometry now, which is really light and very easy to manipulate. Once I'm happy with this, with this preview on, all I need to do now is hit make adaptive skin and it will create a new tool up here. So there's the new tool that's just been created. And with this now, we can just use our normal dynamic subdivision um, by turning this on and you can see that that smooths it out. And we can change our subdivision levels to as many as we need to cover that. It's still a bit blocky. So what I do here is I'll turn off dynamic subdivision. I'll go back to our Q modeling. I'll go to our Q modeling tool. So B, Z, M. And with that, I'll just hover over all of these intermediate ones, loops, and Alt-click on them to remove those. There's too many polygons here, basically. So I'm just going to remove these. 
and you'll see the difference now in the smoothness of this when I press D to turn on dynamic subdivision which is basically here I'll say always yes and we get a much smoother result here um, I may have to smooth more times in order to keep that smoothness but we don't have this angular look to it so shift D to turn that off shift F to see this alt click on each of these in turn to remove them and once you've done them all you're effectively looking at a knot that's ready to go so I just turn D to turn them back on again so that's it um, that's how to create those knots um, I have created four knots as I told as I said at the start of this uh, which I posted on Gumroad and feel free to download them at the end you'll notice that I also took the the basics or, or took the the actual uh, the final loops at the end because I wasn't too happy with this so all I did was I selected these control and alt I click on that I press W to go into move mode went to unmasked mesh center scale them down to flatten them out push them up and that's it so that will create that that flat end for you so unwrap as normal and tile your texture across that if you want so as I said in the Gumroad link in the description you'll find a zip file which contains four OBJs containing these knots a ZPR file which is the project file containing all of this and then also a IMM brush so as usual to load the IMM brush just press B load brush browse to the folder where you've downloaded it to and double click on IMM 3D knots go to any tool that is a new that is a sculptable uh, polymesh 3D and just drag out the knot after having selected it here if you've dragged one out and you're not sure that's the one you want press W and as you click on the other types it will replace that with that knot once you're happy that you have the one you want just go to split split unmasked points and then your knot will be a separate object from here as I said these before these are designed to either use dynamic subdivision or to use real subdivision so you'll need to divide them a couple of times also you'll have to unwrap it yourself a little bit because I didn't spend too much time on that so yeah hope this helps and please do consider subscribing to the channel to support this kind of content bye